My name is Steve Rode, and I am the chief pilot for the Wake Forest Fire Department. I'm also a faculty member at the North Carolina Public Safety Drone Academy, where we teach a number of drone classes, including one on how to be an exceptional visual observer. The bottom line is a visual observer is someone who helps the pilot not to crash or hurt people. Uh, the visual observer is another set of eyes to help the pilot so that while they're focusing on flying the aircraft, somebody else has their back. Well, a visual observer is a great tool. It's crew resource management where you're bringing in other people who are on the same page as the pilot is to help them to avoid collision, damage, or injury. And as many people who can participate and help uh, oversee a scene, uh, it's extremely beneficial. Well, you can use a visual observer in any situation. Even if you're out in the middle of a field on a clear day, having an extra pair of eyes, and most importantly, somebody who's on the same page with the pilot about aircraft operations is beneficial at any time. Well, the most important pre-flight procedure a visual observer should go through is making sure that they have had a meeting of the minds with the pilot. Exactly what is going to be required of the visual observer, exactly what the pilot expects, so there are no surprises in flight. And the pilot is the pilot in command, and they're the person who is ultimately responsible for the safe flight and also on the hook in case anything goes wrong. So my rule is a visual observer should meet with the pilot before the flight and ask how are we going to coordinate and what exactly do you want me to do. Well, if an aircraft is approaching the drone's position, it's these days it's a little bit difficult unless again you're on the same page with the pilot. Your software can alert you to aircraft approaching that may be 10 miles away. In that case, the visual observer should just observe and note where the aircraft is. When an aircraft gets within a couple of miles and appears to be, you're getting telemetry that the aircraft is a certain altitude that is way higher than your drone aircraft is, there isn't much to do but see and avoid and just notate where the other aircraft is. But at the very least, the visual observer can give the pilot in command a heads up about we have an aircraft that is approaching us. Now, one of the problems right now with the software is it doesn't necessarily tell you what the altitude is, so you have to use another program on your phone or your iPad that can tell you the exact flight level because you can get alerts that aircraft are nearby, but they're 30,000 feet above you. I mean, I have had an incident where I was flying at 390 feet and had to duck down for a helicopter that was not, did not alert on the software. Besides the software, uh, the visual observer can also use their ears to listen for aircraft that may be approaching that do not appear to alert on the screen. In major incidents, we will also have news helicopters that may be flying nearby. And the visual observer should point out exactly where the helicopter is to the pilot. It's very easy as a pilot in a major incident to become focused and have tunnel vision and just not hear these things or be aware of them. The visual observer can play a big role. A visual observer should not uh, consider the event to be a chance to catch up with friends. They should not be distracted about what they're doing. They should not shift their focus elsewhere. It should squarely be on the aircraft and the pilot. I don't think that people need to get too wrapped up in what a visual observer should do and shouldn't do because a lot of it is common sense. You should be focused and working as a team member with the pilot. You should be focused on good communications with the pilot. You should have a pre-flight briefing so you understand what your expectations are of both of you. And you should provide actionable information to the pilot to help make the mission, the sortie, safe and also informative to be able to help 
the mission commander with actionable information to save lives. Well, the most uh, obvious training is just a focus. Um, focusing on the task at hand and not getting distracted. And there are other things that the visual observer should be trained in. For example, communicating with the pilot, uh, communicating on the radio if need be. And also a very important function at times is the visual observer should be a great PR representative for the pilot, the agency, and the organization to keep people from distracting the pilot quickly and get back to work. The best thing for a visual observer to do, if they, have, if they see something they want to point out to the pilot, like for example, something is 10 degrees off course or 15 degrees or it's at our 3 o'clock, the best thing I always recommend is holding your arm up and pointing at it until the pilot recognizes exactly what you're talking about. The simpler, the better. Yeah. Well, the primary way you can tell is by looking at the screen and you can see what the drone is pointing at. If you have a strobe light on your drone that you know is located on the back or the front, um, that can be your secondary way of determining orientation. At the very least, what you can do is stop in flight and rotate the drone until you can confirm exactly what its orientation is. Well, if the drone is flying away from you, then the controls, right is right, left is left. But if the drone is coming back towards you, the controls are opposite. And if it's going uh, either direction uh, perpendicular from you, then it's very difficult to tell what your control inputs are doing. So right after I taught a visual observer class at the Wake Forest Fire Department, we had a call about a, about a water rescue incident. And my students went with me to this incident. And they, they were as freshly minted as you can be in a visual observer class. And so we arrived at the scene. It was a reservoir that was about a mile long. And the victim was a half mile down this reservoir. And they had high power lines going across the center of the reservoir. And so while I saw them as the pilot, my visual observer students looking down the reservoir could not tell how far the wires were from the aircraft. So rather than not saying anything, they actually spoke out and alerted me that they were there, which was the perfect thing that a visual observer should do. A visual observer should always speak up in case they have any question, concern, or feel like they want to point something out. You cannot point something out that is too small or insignificant.